Hi, I'm Camille, a software engineer on the Flutter team. And I'm Khan, a developer relations engineer, also on the Flutter team. And today we're talking to you about a fun project that we've been working on with Flutter, Dart, and Raspberry Pi. If you're not already familiar, this is a Raspberry Pi. I'm sorry if you were expecting a more delicious kind of Raspberry Pi. It's a single board computer that was released in 2012 to teach kids computer science. It's grown in popularity since then, and it's now used in a variety of fields for various use cases because it's just so cost effective. A Pi can range from $5 to $75, and you can run all kinds of things on it because, well, it's a computer. I caught the Pi bug myself a few years ago. Inspired by the hashtag now playing trend back in the day, I built a dashboard to display the song that I was listening to on my music streaming service and a dashboard to show the upcoming commuter train status. And since the Pi can be hooked up to all kinds of gadgets and gizmos, like sensors and buttons, I also built a disk drop game with a digital UI. You drop a little puck, it'd fall down, hit a bunch of pegs along the way, and trigger one of the sensors that was installed in a slot down below. The UI would update to show whatever prize the player had won. You could say I've been really into building my side projects on Raspberry Pis for a while now. Every time I build a new project, a little voice in my head likes to ask, can I run this on a Pi? Fast forward to last summer when a teammate and I built a game in Flutter. Doodle Dash, as we like to call it, is a platformer game where players try to jump as high as possible and rack up points. There's power-ups, enemies, the whole nine yards. The game is built with Flame, an open source game engine that's been built on top of Flutter. It was a lot of fun, and that voice in the back of my head popped up again. We started wondering, can we build a game console experience with Dart, Flutter, and Raspberry Pi? With some code, a Raspberry Pi, a screwdriver, and a little Pi accessory called a game hat, turns out we can. Before we jump into how we brought this dream project to life, here were our three big project requirements. First, we wanted a game pad. This was a requirement because, at least to me, a game console experience requires a gamepad. Second, there are gamepads that plug in via USB, but since we have access to the Pi's GPIO pins, we wanted to use them. Personally, my favorite Pi projects have always included working with GPIO pins for input or output, sometimes both. As much as I love writing code, having the hands-on aspect of putting the pieces together is always a ton of fun. If you're not familiar with GPIO pins, don't worry, we'll cover this topic in more detail in just a few moments. And finally, we wanted as much of our code to be as reusable and extensible as possible. Given how community-driven both the Flutter and Pi communities are, we want to share our work with everyone. This means the code that we write shouldn't just enable Doodle Dash to work with the game hat, it should enable other Flutter developers to integrate their games with their game hat as well. Awesome. Now that we've covered our requirements, let's talk setup. We installed a Debian-based operating system for the Pi, Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, on a micro SD card using the Raspberry Pi imager that's available on the Raspberry Pi website. Once that was loaded up, we popped the card into our Pi and booted it up. Then we used Snap, Canonical's app store for Linux, to install Flutter. Now for the fun part, assembling the game hat. The first step was inserting the microSD card into the Pi and attaching the game hat module to the Pi's GPIO pins. Next was connecting the game hat's pre-installed screen to the Pi's micro HDMI out using the included adapter. Finally, positioning the face plates, putting all the screws and support pieces in place, and attaching the joystick to the game hat. Our development cycle involved writing code on our laptops and building, executing, and testing the game on the Pi itself. For portability during development, we used a mini keyboard to run commands on the terminal, and the built-in trackpad let us interact with the Pi's desktop UI. Now that we've got everything set up, let's get building. First, reading the GPIO signals with Dart. As you'll recall from a few moments ago, we attached the game hat to the Pi's GPIO pins. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input-Output. There are signal pins on the Pi that can be controlled with code. As their name indicates, they can be used for input or output. Like I said, you can connect it to all kinds of things from buttons or sensors to, well, in this case, a game hat. The game hat itself is really a pre-configured set of buttons that we want input from. Take a look at the manual for the game hat and mapped out exactly which GPIO pin is used for which button. 
We made this more manageable in code by creating an enum to represent the game hash GPIO input. Each enum has a pin with a game control event. We then use the RPI GPIO package from pub.dev to get the input values from the pins. We create a new class called gamepad to represent, well, a gamepad. On initialization, the code loops through the list of gamehat GPIO enums, initializes each pin, and starts listening for input. The code listens for a change in pin state from true to false or false to true. A value of false means that it's been pressed, and a value of true means that the button has been released. The game will listen to the event stream for new gamepad input. So when there's a change in a pin state, a new game input gets added to the event's stream controller. Now let's talk about a small detail that we glossed over before, turning the signals into game input. The question we need to answer is, how should our code translate raw button press events from the hardware into doodle dash commands my game can understand? To translate between the two, we created a few classes for the doodle dash game to use. There's game control event, which represents what game control was activated, left, right, A, B, etc. And event state, which represents whether the button was pressed or released. Together, they make up a game input event. Like Khan discussed before, the gamepad will listen for events from the physical gamepad buttons and add game input events to its stream controller. To test this out, we can use the gamepad. To use the gamepad, we'll need to initialize it in the app. And now we can run the app while logging the joystick movement, button presses, and releases. Since we're able to confirm that the button presses are coming through, the remaining work left for the project is having Doodle Dash react to the gamepad event stream. OK. So the button presses are being registered. How do we ensure that Flame recognizes game input and allows players to actually control the game? Let's talk about Flame components. Flame components are all the individual pieces that make up a Flame game. I like to think that components are to Flame as widgets are to Flutter, like these assets you see in the game, and the background. And even the things that you don't see on the screen, like the game manager, which is responsible for spawning the on-screen objects, similar to state management widgets. Flame components start off pretty bare, but you can enhance their functionality by using various mixins offered by the Flame package. For example, a popular mixin is the keyboard handler. This mixin gives Flame components access to key press events. You can add the keyboard handler mixin to a component and override the onKey event method to do whatever you'd like whenever there's a new key press. With Doodle Dash, if the left or right key has been pressed, onKey event will make Dash move left or right based on the arrow key that's been pressed. We followed a similar architecture for extending Flame to work with the game hat by creating a mixin called gamepad input. This mixin has three parts. On mount initializes a stream subscription that listens to the gamepad broadcast stream for new game input events. It calls a method named on gamepad event whenever a new event comes through. On remove ensures that the subscription is cleaned up when the component is removed. And finally, on gamepad event, which is called every time there's a game input event from the gamepad. Then in the player class, we add the gamepad input mixin and override on gamepad event. When a new game input comes in and the player has pressed the joystick either left or right, then the character will move left or right, just like the key presses. The only difference here is that we listen to all game input events, not just button presses. So we had to introduce a conditional for event state pressed so that it filters out event state released. With all that coding done, we can now move dash left and right using the joystick on the game hat. Finally, the missing piece in our game console is menu navigation. Flame uses regular old Flutter widgets for overlays and menus. That's great, but we don't have a keyboard, so that means we don't have access to Flutter's built-in keyboard-based focus system. We came up with our own solution, backed by a class called Gamepad Handler. A Gamepad Handler has five callbacks that can be called, on up, on down, on left, on right, and on confirm. These callbacks can be used to navigate the menu screen. For example, this next character method that changes the selected character. You'll see it being passed to a gamepad handlers on left and on right callbacks in the next slide. Within our menu widget, a new gamepad handler is initialized for each section of the UI that requires focus and directional control from the gamepad. Upon game initialization, the character selector gamepad handler is active. On left and on right calls the next character method to change the selected character, while on down changes the active selector to the next section that wants focus, the difficulty selector gamepad handler below it. 
The neat part is the active selector can also be used to conditionally style the section of the UI that is in focus. We can check for which selector is currently active to put a border on that section of the UI. Finally, the widget initializes a subscription to the GamePad's broadcast stream and listens for game input events. When a game input value comes through, it activates the selected GamePad handler's callback. And there you have it, a fully functional menu navigation system. You can use the GamePad controls to select a character, change the difficulty level, and start a new game. Once we got the core functionality working, we had a few things to work out, like making sure to adapt the UI to the smaller screen. And this is a game console after all, so we wouldn't want to carry a keyboard with us everywhere we go. So we also made sure that the Doodle Dash app launches on boot up. And finally, for the finishing touch, we also added a 3D printed case. How cool is that? So cool! And there you have it, a Flutter, Dart, and Raspberry Pi game console. This project might be a prototype, but it sure does show so much potential for Flutter and Dart on Raspberry Pi. For sure. Camille, this was such a fun project to work on. I mean, I truly felt like I was five years old again, getting my very first <laughs> game console. It also makes me very excited, looking forward to what's coming for Flutter and Linux in the future. In fact, the new Ubuntu 23.04 desktop installer is built with Flutter, so that's pretty cool. I also want to say getting to work with the open source community throughout this project has been such a great experience. Plus, they're always doing awesome things like this. I mean, I've seen a flame game running on a smartwatch. So that's all to say, I'm so excited to see what the Flutter community continues to build. Completely agreed. But wait, Khan, do we have the source code to share with everyone? Good question. You'll notice that this code was made to be very modular, given our goal to make it reusable and extensible. We'd love to see you use it with your own Flutter and Flame games. We're polishing the code for this project right now and plan to share it on the Flutter samples repository in GitHub very soon. Be sure to follow Flutter Dev for updates. That sounds great. All that said, I think that's about it for us. Thanks for joining us on this Flutter, Dart, and Raspberry Pi journey. I'm Camille. And I'm Khan. See you later. Bye.